beautiful people and fellow winers and welcome to a little something to wine about with your host Siobhan Camille and Ty Michelle where we wine while we wine w-i-n-e about all things life from relationships to beauty and health fitness parenting family and more because sometimes you just need to wine a little it is second Wednesday which means sis let's wine and today we're going to be whining about femininity, okay? That's what's on the dockets for today. Um, and so whether this is your first time here or you are a regular whiner, grab a glass of your favorite red, white, rosé sparkling, or just something casual if you don't drink, and join us on the couch. <laughs> My Vanna White. Vanna, got your Vanna. <laughs> I have the Vanna on. The black Vanna does. So we got to come up with a, the Vivian White. It's not Vivian. bad. It's a Vivian White. <laughs> hey, everybody. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. Um, as this is the second Wednesday in the new year of 2020. And we want you also have a very prosperous year. And I hope that you're getting a good start to this year. So, as you all know, if you have been following us, we are doing the brand of Stella La Rose. Stella Ze Rose. <laughs> and so, we both have wines. No, we don't have the same thing. So, for me, this Stella Rose is still a popping great um, because I'm, I was never a Stella Rose person. So for me, this is a new one. Um, I'll let Siobhan tell us, tell us one of the things, wonderful, wonderful hostess. What, are you, what is your Stella Rose of choice today? So today's Stella Rosa is a Stella Rosa, l'originale, it's black. Now, first of all, people, listen, I feel like we need to talk about last week's wines real quick. So if you were with us, I had the Moscato from the Sweet Collection, the Imperiale Sweet Collection, and Michelle had the Asti. Listen, I'm going to speak for me, okay? So, oh, go ahead, because I'm, I'm after you. I'm, I'm going to follow up. I'm going follow, to do the follow-up. I promise. Um, because I enjoyed it, y'all. I gave it a four. It was sweet. It was not too sweet. It was good. I, I had a good time with my Moscato. Mm-hmm. The day of. Y'all, I woke up with a headache that never went away all day, the day after. So what I'm saying to you is be aware that is extremely high sugar content, man. Headache. Hydrate. Hydrate. And let me tell y'all what's crazy. If you watched the Christmas karaoke live, which we did on Instagram, and you can also find it on YouTube. Um... We were mixing, blending, red, white, sparkling. We was, we was, we was um, mixologists up in this piece. Okay. okay. We was poor, dazzle, shamamming. <laughs> ah, yeah, all that. And no problems the next day. So I was like, how I get hit this hard? Hit me with your shot. And it did. It did. And my head was hurting all day. So I was like, no. So when I went looking for this federal stuff for this week, I was like, get me something dry. And y'all know if you're here, I don't like dry. But I was like, get me something dry. Now, what I will say, Stella Rosa, thank you for this. They have on the back of their regular bottles, not the sparkling, their little sweetness indicator. This is a five, supposedly. Okay. Um, This has it too. I got it now because it didn't last week. Yeah, the ones last week that we got, they they don't. Um, but this one did, and I went with the five because most of what I was seeing was a six. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm gonna make this happen, but I'm gonna tell y'all now, like 
this week and next week. And if they not, then if they are not right, the last Stella Rose I get will not be a popping grapes. This is still a popping grapes. I will go to Tropical Mango because we had that last year and I know what that's about. And I, I stay safe. Okay. <laughs> I don't even remember if I liked it, but it's safe. It didn't give me a headache. So this is, this is, this is try number two, Stella Rosa, because y'all are not known for dry wines, at least not where I am. They're they not selling that. They're selling y'all semi-sweets and your sweets. So I went with the Stella Rosa Black. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's some red mixing in here. It's got a little something on the back. We'll get to that later during the review, but that's what's in my gloss today. And uh, Michelle, you want to tell us your Stella Rosa choice okay. experience? Let me tell y'all Stella Rosa. No. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I am not a real sweet wine drinker. I'm not. Um, I have learned through the fruit. Through. through the few months we have been doing this, I like um, a little bit of dry, a little bit of sweet. I can handle more dry than sweet. Um, I too had a very similar experience the next day. However, for myself personally, I know it wasn't the hydration level because this girl here still drinks almost a gallon of water a day. So the hydration part was it. I woke up with, you ever had, you know, when you were little, you were like, mommy, my tummy aches. Like, not like you got the BGs, not that. But like your tummy, it's like just a little annoying ache. And it's like right here at the top of your stomach. I know sometimes people think, well, maybe it's gas. And I do uh, have um, acid reflux. It wasn't that. It wasn't that at all. I was trying to figure out the next morning what was wrong. Pulse. Not even the next morning. I was asleep and it woke me up out of my sleep. It was at that moment, I knew, it, because it was the last thing that I consumed, it had to have been the one. But I was like, you know what? Drink some water, go back to bed, you should be fine. The next morning, the problem persisted. At that moment, I absolutely was sure it was the one. To the point where I didn't really start to feel better until I got about 44 ounces of, of water in me. And the reason why I know the exact amount is because I keep a 22 ounce cup at my job that I refill about five times a day. After the second cup and my breakfast and my first uh, 30 calories or less snack is when my stomach finally start, started to settle where I didn't have that ache. So, zip bubbly is not for me. Um, and my body was like, girl, what are you doing? So right now, me and Stella Rosa, we on a um, suspect level. So, <laughs> like, for real, I, that's where I'm at with y'all. We suspect level. Like, I'm looking at you with the side eye, like, what you doing? What, like, for real. Um, but getting to that, I have the Stella Rosa uh, red. And I will take a picture of it and post it. Um, and I only poured a little in my wonderful glass. Um, and we shall see how this goes. I am also going to consume something else after I drink this to make sure I have enough on my stomach as far as food goes. Um, on this, the sweetness level does say five. I told y'all, me and you, Stella Rose, you got the side eye right now. I don't know. Um, so we shall see if I need to whine a little bit about this wine during yeah. this review, okay? <laughs> All right? That's that's where we are, honey. Um, we don't trust your five. We don't, we don't trust your five. I don't, I, I'm... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we are. Um, yep. But before we get into that, Siobhan, I know. What you been doing this week, girl? Let's catch up. What, what you been doing? So my biggest thing this week, um, I just, I really am trying. I've been trying to stay on top of stuff. I got a planner at the end of 2011. 20, ooh, 2011. Lord. 2011, girl. Ooh. Lord. 2021. <laughs> <laughs> I, got a, I got a planner because I'm one of those people that, 
putting everything in my phone is not going to work. No, I can only, first of all, it only shows you like the first three things because of how small it is. So if you have anything after that, I'm not going to see it. I'm not. I don't put alarms really on. My phone is very specific. So I needed something for work. So I don't have to check my work email, you know, Outlook every night. And I have a lot of meetings in the morning. So it's just easier if I can look at something physical instead of having to log on, go through passwords, do all that. Just, okay. So I've been just trying to stay organized. That's my, that's my, not really what I've been up to, but that's my goal for the week. That's my motivation. Okay, look. Step by step. Day by day. Okay, and I'm I'm all for the organizer. I am one. I am the note taker, and I'm not the note taker on electronics. I am the one, and it's a little redundant for me. Um, I am the one to write things down. So organizer, baby, look, have it. Um, especially <laughs> look, I got six. I got six kids, four and a half in and out of my house at any given time. Um. So I understand the right, I'm a write it down person. If, and then if I write it down, a lot of times I remember it a little bit better because I am dyslexic for those who don't know. Um, so that helps me to remember things. But I will say after I write it down, if I know I have to go somewhere or I know it's something that I need, I may need to have with me, I will even do one of two things. I will then transfer it to my notes section and, um, or I will take a picture of it so that I will physically have it because my phone goes with me everywhere. But that, and I'm, I'm not carrying a planner with me like it's 1998, I'm not doing that. I'll keep it at home. I'll keep one at work, but I'm not, I'm not doing that. So um, I, I get it, like, good luck. Um, so what have I been up to? I, y'all, we record a couple weeks in advance. Last week, I was posed the question by our wonderful hostess, Siobhan, in reference to what I have learned in reference to marriage. And forgiveness is what I said. And I feel like right now, God said, oh. That's what you think? <laughs> is, is that what, that's your answer? Well, here is this text. Mm, mm-hmm. And I'm telling you now, I am failing with passing colors. <laughs> I'm just be honest. I am failing with passing colors. I thought it was passing with flying colors. I am failing with passing colors. Okay. All right. I acknowledge it. I will repent later. But forgiveness is not in your heart right now. But right now, my heart is on one. <laughs> And I don't know if I'm gonna move past it on this small situation. I mean, all in all in time, all in all in time. I see, I see the eye, eyebrow raise for those who are listening to this. Um, and I guess this is a great time, by the way. Please, if you are listening to this, you can catch this on YouTube. Um, yeah. We forgot to tell y'all last week. Sorry that it's 2022. <laughs> One of our other mini, mini change. We have made many a change and updates yes. to this podcast. Okay. Now that we are, we are seven months in, and we have learned a lot through the first six. So we have, are applying changes. And this year, all of our episodes are in color on YouTube. So if you are listening on your favorite podcast platform, but you want to see us every week, come on over to YouTube. Subscribe to the channel again, like we said. Tell a friend, tell a cousin, tell an auntie, a sister, a brother, a stepbrother, a stepmother. You know, just tell them listen. Tell them listen. We nothing else guarantee we give you something to talk about. Fact. So that's what's going on with me at, at some point. <laughs> at some point. Um, moving on. <laughs> Now it's time, ladies and gentlemen, for what we like to call our wine fun fact. Because we have been featuring for the month of January the Stella Rosa wines, I just figured it would be a nice thing to know a little bit about the Stella Rosa um, brand. Hmm. And the quick, quick, 
quick fun fact is that Stella Rosa wines are 5.5% alcohol by volume or less mm -hmm. than half of a boozy as the average bottle of wine. Now, yep. I completely believe that. I feel like most of their bottles say low alcohol on them. Yeah, but it's low alcohol, high diabetes. Yeah, it's y'all trade y'all traded that ABV for some sugar. So I would say this to me, it's sounding like as I was reading about the actual brand itself, um, this is a if a, a step after wine cooler, a step yeah after wine coolers, or it could be right there with wine coolers. You might get a little bit more from a wine cooler, cooler than you do this, and that's just my honest opinion. And so Siobhan. <laughs> so Michelle. Sis. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Sis, 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 sis. Let's whine about this thing. People like to call femininity. Femininity. Amen. My first question to you. Oh Lord. I already think I know. I know what this is. Go ahead. Feel that you are a Feminist. Oh, okay. <laughs> Here's a, no, because you know what? I, I was looking up mm -hmm. feminist and femininity in, in anticipation of this. Uh huh. And so here's, 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 oh, I hesitate to say no and I hesitate to say yes. Hear me out. I the reason being, the true definition of feminism, not, not, not the skew, but the actual one is about ensuring that women and men have equal opportunities and equal access. It's about that. It's not saying men and women are the same. It's saying equal opportunities and equal access. And if you look at the history from like, especially around the voting thing, in the early 1900s, that's what it was about. It was about equality of opportunity to vote, equality of opportunity to go to school. Because there were times, if you look throughout history, where only men could go to school, women could not. Feminism, though it wasn't called that back in the day, that's what it was about, okay? It was about getting women the same opportunities for self-sufficiency as men so that women were not dependent on men. And for that, I can get behind it. Yes. But as with all things, people take them to the extreme and now it's become a different, it's just different levels. So I was even looking and there was something that said there were four types of feminists. There was a Marxist feminist who blames uh, capitalism for everything. There's a, I, I'm serious. You know what? Let me see if I can find it. There was a liberal. Oh goodness! I there feel was like a liberal that. feminist who, um, I'm not even gonna be able to find this now, am I? Yes, you are. It's I'm gonna try because y'all, this, this, no, this was the one about what is it and why so many people hate it. Um, I'm not gonna be able to uh, find it, guys, so quickly, and I don't want to take that much time. But basically, there were four types, and. I find myself loosely relating to understanding of two of them. Like I would say yes to two. And those are the two where, and I'm blending them, but one side is basically like, look, men and women are not the same, but they deserve equal opportunities. The other one is like, women are also not all the same. So expecting femininity to look the same in every woman is just not gonna happen. Facts. For that, I'm like, yeah. To the other two feminists, <laughs> the one that's like, let's blame money for everything, and the one that's like, men are the cause of all the detriment in the world. Like those two, nah, nah. I'm not for the man bashing part, and I'm not for the let's blame it all on money part. But the other two, those big things, I'm like, I can get with. So would I call myself a feminist? No. Do I 
And that's because I can't take, I can't take the whole doctrine. I can't even take 90% of the doctrine being spewed on by any or any of the four for right. me to say, yes, I feel like in order for me to co-sign to a movement, I got to at least co-sign with about 80, 80%, at least 80%. I, I completely agree. So I took the time while you were talking about that to kind of look up the four types. It's um, a echo or eco feminist is this form of feminism views um it's focused on control and domination not only as a source of women's oppression but as being harmful um the liberal feminist uh this is a feminist that works within the structure of the main system system society to integrate women into the structure um, the cultural feminist. Oh, you're looking at a different one than I had. Oh, one? okay. So the four that I found, I had to look it up. There were radical, Marxist, liberal, indifference. Those are okay. the four that I saw. But if you look up another one, they said there are 12 types of feminism, which gets back to my original point of whose feminism are we talking about? Because you go from three, you got four, you got 12 guys. And I think to speak... <laughs> To that extent is the problem. Because when, when you start adding 20 definitions to a single word, now you have pre is that re you I personally did start to question is that really what that is? I feel like there should be a different word for it at that point. Anytime a word has 20 different def 12 different definitions, that's a, come on, y'all doing too much. Um, that's an extreme. Now, um, I am not a feminist. I'm sorry. I'm not. Do I believe equal work, equal pay? Absolutely. Man, woman, animal. <laughs> like, if you're working, you're doing the same amount of work as the, as the coworker beside you, and you're in the same department, same ranking and all of that. Yes, equal pay is definitely necessary. Um, do I don't believe that women can do everything that men can do. Yeah, That's too. not how God made us, period. Don't at me. I don't care. I, I don't care what you say. There's nothing you can say to me that'll change my mind. God did not make us to do what men do. So if you don't like it, you can exit. I don't care. Um, just like God didn't make men to do what women can do. We have roles and it's okay to play your position. And that does not mean that your position is any less of value. It's just knowing your role, period. Mm -hmm. um, see, and I, and I say that because I want to speak to the accountability piece to that. And that's the biggest issue. You want, you want the title, you want the... The, the bragging rights, you want to boast about, oh, we equal, we this, this, that, and the other. But when, when it comes time to, excuse my words, nut up, you can't. You can't. You want to holler, oh, wait, no, I'm a girl. I'm a woman. But uh-uh. Mm -mm. So you can't play both sides, baby. You can't play both sides. God don't even want to have nothing to do with you what you playing both. God don't want to have nothing to do with you playing both sides. But little do you know, neither does the devil. He don't want to have nothing to do with you either because he don't know what side you're going to go on. But huh, that's a whole number one. Oh, side. But anyway, I, that's who I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I believe that there are certain roles that I'm going to play that all things that I'm going to do because I am a female. Period. There are certain things that I expect from my man because I am a female. Yes. Yes, indeed. Period. Mm hmm And it is what it is. Um... As far as femininity, 
I do believe that there are very, 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 very few that are, that truly show true femininity um, and or display or exude or, you know, whatever vocabulary you want to use, the feminine, femininity. I try. I have sometimes when I'm downright mannish. Like, it's like, oh, well, you, you, you went, you went the masculine way on that one. I did. But there are certain, there are times when it's time, it's, it's a time and a place for everything. And there are times when as a woman, it is time for you to be feminine. It is a time for you to take the back seat. It is a time for you to be submissive. It is, it is a time for you to be dainty. It is a time for you to be classy. It is a time for you to put on your sweatpants and your tims and get down right dirty. It's a time for that. And still, in those times when you are showing your your rough, your toughness, or your quote-unquote masculinity, or being masculine, or displaying that trait, you can still be feminine in that. The whole thing with, with all of it, honestly, is it comes down to, to whatever your social construct is. True. The idea of femininity and masculinity will always be an issue evolving because men and women are constantly evolving. And what oh. society expects of men and women is constantly evolving. Like even, even for, and I hear, I hear you and I don't necessarily disagree, but even the stuff that is considered feminine, the problem, here's the problem. Here's the big problem <laughs> is you have femininity and you have masculinity and they are two opposites, but people have put them at extremes mm-hmm. because I looked up masculine versus feminine again in in lieu of this <clears throat> and they're always opposite it was like let's go to the poll oh. it was <laughs> y'all let's, let's, put my glass I, I gotta get my glasses so when she does this I can put my glasses on and go mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean I literally Get looked up, with church <laughs> I literally looked up masculine versus feminine and here's what we we here's what we had um feminine not aggressive masculine aggressive feminine dependent masculine independent feminine easily influenced not masculine not easily influenced feminine submissive masculine dominant feminine passive masculine active feminine home oriented masculine worldly feminine not hurt oh wait easily hurt emotionally masculine not easily hurt emotionally Feminine, indecisive, masculine, decisive. Feminine, talkative, masculine, not at all talkative. Feminine, gentle, masculine, tough. Feminine, sensitive to others. Masculine, of course, opposite, less sensitive. Feminine, very desirous of security. Masculine, not very desirous of security. Really good? Okay. Let me continue. Feminine cries a lot. Masculine rarely cries. Feminine is emotional. Masculine is logical. Feminine is verbal. Masculine analytical. Feminine is kind. Masculine is cruel. Feminine is tactful. Masculine is blunt. Feminine is nurturing. Masculine is not nurturing. The problem that I have with that is because it's so polar opposite, the vision of femininity is weak. And that's what I'm getting to. It's not, it, first of all, it ignores biology. I hate to be the person to tell y'all this, but both men and women both have estrogen and testosterone. Yes. If nobody told you that, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but that's what it, that's the truth. That's the truth. Um, Biologically, women tend to have more estrogen than men. Yes. Men tend to have more testosterone than women. Yes, but we all have both. And the same way that I've seen a lot of guys talk about, I mean, well, I want my woman to just come and jump on me. Why I always have to initiate? Well, understand her initiating then is when her testosterone kicks in. That's not her estrogen making her jump on you. 
So the same way that you're like, oh, all these women where you can't be feminine. If you want a woman to jump on you and take the lead in that respect, you're actually asking for a, a masculine trait. So according to according to the definitions that the are definitions made. and according to biology, because mm-hmm. you want to know what pushes to really make that move is testosterone. Mm-hmm. So you're asking her to tap into her testosterone, aka her, a her masculinity. This is the issue I have. Again, there's so polar opposites that you had. Women are basically perceived as supposed to be dependent, weak, emotional, can't get it together. And men are supposed to be the complete opposites. You cannot, life is about balance and that can't work. No. That cannot but work. It doesn't work. And one, God didn't make us one dimensional. No. And so that's what I'm saying. When somebody, when one woman's femininity is different than another woman's femininity. Because even reading this, I was like, well, daggone it, I'm a man. Because half this list, um, I'm aggressive. I'm not going to apologize. If I want something, I go for it. Like, and that's the other thing. Socially, we tell children, boys and girls, if you want something, go for it. But then when females get a certain age, we chastise them for that. Oh, you so aggressive. I'm sorry. I wanted it, so I went after it. Isn't that what y'all told me to do when I was five? Now I'm at 15 and you telling me well, no, you don't go after it. But you're supposed to go after it in a softer way. Oh, so but then, but so then what may, wait, but what you consider soft may not be what I consider soft. Because what I just did, I consider soft, but to you that was still masculine. Or if so I do I it feel like I'm emasculating you when I'm actually not, I'm just displaying my. Femininity. It's my femininity in a dominant way. To be feminine does not mean that you are not dominant. And the thing is with that, even, even, okay, let's do this. Women are supposed to be passive, right? But then explain to me passive aggressiveness because I, I'm sorry. And a lot of dudes are out here walking proof that even though y'all don't want to admit it, some chick used her femininity and manipulated the crap out of you. And now you've got kids and now you've got alimony. And now you got child support. And now you have all these problems. Because again, women are not, we're not weak and dumb. We're not. Yeah, that was the other part. It made, say like a, a lot of the listening to the verses, you you would think to be feminine, which is what I guess the extremists, when you look at that list, you can see why people go to the extreme. Because that list is extreme. And what they what what what's not being taught or not not even being taught what's not being talked about is like you said the balance the yin the yang between the two the where you are weak i may be strong where this is not your strong suit it may be is your strength it may be mine um where yes you lead but sometimes i have to take the lead or I see something that you don't see. So, <coughs> and, and, and that's in, in, the, in the world, I feel like um, that some things when you take things literally, and I'm a literal person, it, it can definitely, without remembering balance and exception. Like there's always an exception to a rule, um, but not an exception to a truth. Um, and the battle between femininity and masculinity, people are forgetting the truth. Like what about the men? Like they made it seem like to be masculine, you never get hurt. Like nothing ever phases you. And that's a lie. There are a lot of hurt, masculine people out there. Mm-hmm. And I say people because I, I know some girls, they, they a little rough. Uh, but they, their feelings still get hurt. Guys, guys' feelings mm. still get hurt. So when your feelings get hurt, what, you're not masculine? That's what you're, that, looking at the verses, that is what it's saying. If your feelings are hurt, it also may be, if you're feminine, you seem like a dunce. 
like you are. It also says that femininity is equated with <clears throat> nothing but emotions and, and needing somebody to tell you what to do. You're a grown child is what it's making it seem like. You are a grown two-year-old because two-year-olds are, are em emotional. But even in their emotion, even in their emotion is logic. They cry to get attention because they know they can't. They're processing. They cry to get food because the first time they, they cry out of emotion of being hungry and they are fed. It causes a reaction. They go, oh, I'm hungry. I'm gonna cry, food. I do this because we do that as we age. If I do this, this will happen. And then it's that. That's how we identify patterns. That's how we learn anything. So my thing is with either masculine and feminine or to the point of femininity, since that's, that's what this is about. Everybody, of femininity is not going to be the same across the board. I'm an extremely logical female. I don't do emotion a lot. Does that mean I'm emotionless? Nope. But no man is emotionless either. Like you're not, no person is emotionless. If you're emotionless, honey, you're a robot. And I suggest you get your you, And that's another thing. Like you got to also look at your, um, your life journey. Like, you know, you may learn, well, a lot of people learn how to hide their emotions. They, and in that they can see, or a woman can see not to be feminine or to display femininity because they don't let everybody in, but that's based off this world. This world is trash. Um, so you self defense, defense mechanisms, they're real, they exist, but that doesn't mean that I, I that, that doesn't mean that that woman has has completely forgotten her femininity. I do believe that in this day and time, the reason we don't see femininity the way that we saw it in the past is because, like you said, we, we, we have started to process a lot of things differently and defense mechanisms. There was a lot of hurt and a lot of things done when women were ex more, ex you know, more to the definition of femininity. Um, and what has happened over the generations is moms, aunties, grandmoms, and daughters, daughters watch moms do this and said, as a defense mechanism, that's not going to be me. Moms have taught their daughters some, don't let this be you. I'm going through this, but you don't have to. So you have to take into consideration what that life journey is that particular one person has gone through which is why like you said no one's one person's femininity is going to be the same let's take me and you for example my femininity is not yours you can tell that i'm gonna be honest just simply by the way that we dress yeah. and it's nothing wrong with the way either of dress let's let's get that but her personal style and what she sees as feminine, I just like, oh, okay, yeah, I can see that in you. But that's not my style of femininity. Um, even up to the way, to your posture. You have some people who may think femininity is uh, sitting back, your hands could be folded like this, you know, as long as your back is straight and elongated elongated you have some women who literally will sit straight up ankle crossed at the ankles knees together hands slightly placed relax your shoulders so i should have went a charm school instructor i promise you but that even speaking of that that even goes to that because remember um back in the day well i know they still have them but back in the day when your mom or whomever you were with thought you were entirely too masculine they sent you to charm school but so that even you, speaks. <clears throat> but that even speaks. Sorry to cut you off. But that even speaks to, it's learning. Yeah, you had to learn that. And I do want to make a point that even being more reserved isn't even necessarily. It could be from a place of hurt, but a lot of it is also from a place of self preservation. Right. Not even just defense, but just self preservation. Right. And evolution and wanting to do better and be better. Mm -hmm. And I will say to that point. Um, look, 
The world is about balance. Life is about balance. And so if you also want to know why you have more quote unquote masculine women or women taking up the masculine role, I know nobody wants to hear this, but you got to look at the men. Like if let's, let's do this. A woman who is a mother with a husband or a male and living with taking, helping her take care of the kid. And the only reason I hesitate to say husband is because, you know, you got the, 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 like the, other know, the other, the others types, but they are parenting this child together in the same house. That level of a mother, let's do this. A woman whose husband is in the house, let's just say their husband, a woman whose husband is there with her raising to the, the kids. If he were to, let's say he's in the army, he goes and dies, or he has a heart attack, something happens and takes him out of here. Balance shifts. It's all on her now. So she's going to have to pick up the more masculine role. That's life. So if you also want to know why you have more women doing X, Y, and Z, look at the men. And I say this for the, let's be, let's be frank. Black American culture largely overall romanticizes and encourages the struggle mm. and a lot mm. of foolishness. And so you will have people who go, it, let me say this, it's very difficult to be soft. It's very difficult to be soft and feminine when you know that that could put a target on your back. True. I hate to be that person, and it's not even just to Black American culture. It's just to American it's culture in general. In general. It, it, that that is a general thing. It's very difficult, even to a lot of these quote unquote more traditional role countries. Yo, like you have whole countries where women cannot, women have to be fully clothed, like fully clothed, and I'm talking the whole like habit look, the whole top to bottom. Why? Because in that culture, it is said, oh, well, because you can't tempt a man. Not teaching men and boys not to be extra and abusive, but we're telling girls, you know what? Your femininity or your feminine curves or your face, all of this is too tempting to a man. So you need to have a full burqa on. You need to have a full parka on. You need to be covered head to toe with gloves. Really? But again, I mean, I'm not criticizing them because American culture is no better. There was mm -hmm. a whole thing I saw where like, there was this, this site, not site, this page years ago on Facebook, and I think it's still there, that was like, uh, women need to, about anti-feminism, and they were all about femininity and how women need to go back to wearing dresses and all this stuff. And I was like, you realize the sexual assault and rape rates in the US, right? And you want chicks to just run out here in dresses and skirts? I'm not saying you can't have something bad happen to you in in pants, but um, but it's a lot easier in a dress, okay? Mm -hmm. Like it just is, like it it just is. I'm so good. I'm like to an extent, you can't be. And I had this conversation with the boyfriend at this point. You can't be that feminine around certain people if you don't trust them to be so. You can't be soft around people where you know your softness is going to be taken advantage of because again, as you said, a lot of the definition of femininity makes you seem like a dumb, stupid, easy target, weak. So if I, and if I'm going to be weak, then I can't be weak around everybody because that makes you a sitting lamb in a, in a world full of wolves. That's not smart. That's just not smart you set yourself to be a victim in a world that then criticizes and punishes victims like oh, victim. you can't you can't you there is no there's no winning and even to the point of femininity on my personal yes you and i definitely have different you know definitions of feminine femininity and how our femininity expresses but i remember having a conversation when he was the boo friend and this was two years ago i bought a whole bunch of dresses summer two years ago why because i trusted the person that is now my significant other that i can do this and especially as a woman who has been sexually assaulted who has been violated um and i was in pants and i am very hard for me to trust anybody this person proved to me i can wear nothing i mean i bought a crack ton of dresses y'all i got a whole tote 
full of summer dresses, long, short, all of that, because I can embrace now, I feel comfortable embracing that part of me when I didn't before. And I remember to a specific point, you and I went to, and this was years ago, this was years ago, we went to a football party back in the summer of 08 out in Waldorf oh. at one of the players' houses. And I was with my significant other at the time. And I had told him, because he was like, oh, you wear pants all year round? Yes, I do. You don't have, you own shorts. I do own shorts, because I, I like shorts, but I wear shorts in my house. I don't wear shorts outside. And we had a whole conversation. I said, you know what? I wear shorts. Mind y'all, I wore black capri cut tights under my shorts. The way that that evening went, and the attention that I got, because again, most people, I mean, I had like a cheer skirt, so they had seen me like that, but it's, it's a different context, cheerleader versus your personal. Right. And I got so many comments and stuff, and he saw it that when we were leaving, he was like, yeah, I see why you don't wear shorts now. Right. Because why am I setting myself up for that attention that I don't want? I th- but see, I feel like that's speaking, let's speak to the, the dress because you you brought it up and femininity I feel like even that is a, that is another what facet of or part of the whole feminist act um when people are oh well I, I should be able to wear what I want without in a perfect world darling that's a lot of things we should be able to do in a perfect world However, from the beginning of time, that's not how this goes. And is it fair? No, it's not. Who said life is going to be fair? We have gotten to a point where it's so me, 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 I, I, I know that's not fair, baby. There's so much stuff out here that's not there and it's sadly unfortunate i am not agreeing with it that the fact that it's not there i think it sucks balls but even knowing that and feeling that way i still have to be smart and understand that if i go out here half naked I am going to receive a certain type of attention. I am not going to receive the same type of attention that I'll receive in a business suit that I'll receive walking down the street in a bathing suit. Mm-hmm. I, I, and I'm not at the beach. And even, and even environment matters because, again, you can be at the beach. Think about it. When you go to the beach, you know, I don't want, like, as an adult, like, it's, it's barely nothing. You're almost naked, you know? But think you don't get a lot of, in my experience, I can speak to me, the cat calling, the this, that, because it's expected. You're at the beach. This is, the, this is what you're supposed to wear. That's the mentality that most have. I can't speak for all, because I do know there are some exceptions to everything. But most people, have, you're, you're at the beach. Like, what is your problem? Like, you know, you would get looked at funny that way because it's like, really? Like, Come on now, that's too much. As to if you were in this walking down the street getting ready to go to the club. Now, different environment, different mindset, and it could be the same thing. Yes. But the environment matters as well. So yes, this, if, the, if something as simple as the place that you're walking matters, what makes you think that what you have on isn't going to put that logic together if i rather i have buildings behind me or water behind me is the environment something that simple will change someone what makes you think what i have on won't change won't have well you know won't have someone look at me differently and you know and, and, and like i said is it fair no but that comes down to what's appropriate. And so to me, to say that it's not fair. See, that, 
uh, appropriate. See, that's the other we we know it's appropriate, but a fem a feminist would tell you, well, doesn't matter if it's appropriate. It's the fact that I'm a woman. I should be able to wear what I want, no matter where I'm at. In a perfect world, that makes sense. My thing is, but logically, <clears throat> no, you cannot. You cannot go to a job interview for a human resources professional position and you're wearing the dress you wore to the club out with your homegirls last week well here's the thing you can but just understand and accept the respect the response that you get see this is the thing as long as you are clothed you can and that's just again on a legal standpoint and i'm gonna come to this from a very logical standpoint and i don't disagree with you but here's what i'll say you can if I, it, so this is my thing, this is my thing to that, to that I should be able to do X, Y, and Z when it comes to dress specifically and other things. You can, you know, like I should be able to walk down the street in a bikini. You can. And nobody holler at me. Well, stop. You can't control the actions of other people. And you have to understand what you're walking into. You still have to be aware. Now, like you said, if you're going to walk into a job interview for a fortune 500 and what you went to the club in understand that you may not get the position because that company will also no, have a, your credentials but because that company that. will also have a dress code that you already violated walking in the door so my thing is it's not that you cannot in that can as far as the definition of able you are able you can but understand the same way that our parents used to tell us, well, you can do that, but this is going to be the result. See, that's where the problem comes. You want to be able to do X, Y, and Z and then get the result that you want, but that may not be the case. And that's for anything. You can be the best woman out here and King of Zamunda a dude and feel like that should get you X, Y, and Z. And it won't because you can't dictate how he responds. You could be the best dude out here and go, <clears throat> and I'm saying this based off a conversation we had recently, and go let this chick run your car and do all of these other things for this chick and bring her bottles of liquor and hang out with her and her friends and pay for all of them to get in the club. That does not mean she is obligated to do anything for you, sweetheart. That's what people fail to want to accept. Just because you do X, Y, and Z does not automatically people meet, does not automatically mean people will respond in X, Y, Z way that you want them to. That's it. You want to be, you want to go to your CEO 500 interview in a thong and a, in a thong and a bikini, go for it. Now, when security escorts you out of the building, that is what you get for the action that you did. It's no different than when your mom go, you stop doing that. Stop doing that. Stop jumping on that. Stop jumping on that bed. And then when your bed breaks and your mom goes, I'm not buying you another one because I told you to stop doing it. Now you're uncomfortable on that sprung and that broken spring mattress or your dead memory foam mattress or whatever. But you know what? I told you not to. And you kept doing it. So there are consequences to all actions and decisions. You just said dead memory foam. I mean, you know, you talk about memory foam, like a certain memory foam. It may not, mem it may not memorize anymore. It may be dead. It's just flat. It's just like. Uh, I'm so messed up. I mean, listen, listen, listen. It, it don't spring when it doesn't spring back anymore. Cause you kept doing the most. That's what you did. But it was like dead, dead. <laughs> that's on you. And and that's what I'm saying. I could put it. Completely. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop. I completely understand and agree. And I feel, I think that in a lot of things, we have to come to the realization. And when you come to a realization, it doesn't have to be traumatic. No. Everything is not trauma because it doesn't go your way. No, that's true. It's not, it's the word no exists for a reason outside of sexual assault. Right. There is the word no. 
And the same way as women or feminists like to use no, no means no, I, and I don't have to take it. Yes, that's true. But that same word can be used in other instances and it's okay because it, the answer is no. You right. might not want to hear it. You might not even agree with it. And that's fine too. But the answer is still no. No matter how hard you kick, scream, roll over, shout, protest, walk down the street with vaginas on your head, which I think is the dumbest thing in the world. Listen, I'm trying not to get triggered <laughs> because there was a whole march where I'm going to be honest. These women and people who think they're women and they're not, hmm. I don't care, you don't like it, it is what it is. Um, went so far left with things and it was like, the true issue at hand was obliviated. And that's what, and that brings me back to the beginning. My thing is this, femininity exists. Femininity is variable because it depends on culture and person how a woman expresses her femininity is going to change. What is considered feminine is going to change as society changes. Most chicks you know now wear pants. There was a time not that long ago where that was considered masculine. Most women I know have a job. There was a time when women could not because that was considered masculine. So there is masculinity versus feminine, femininity in culture, and characteristics in biology. And some of that is fact and will not move. Again, we both have estrogen and testosterone. Biological fact, not moving. What social constructs are created are always evolving. Oh, yeah, always. They're never the same from one, honestly, from one, not even one, they're never the same from one generation to the next, but they're not even the same from one person to the next. So I think once, honestly, once we all can come to that understanding, right? It, more things can get accomplished yes. in its proper way. But the first thing we have to do is come to an understanding. And an understanding doesn't mean that I'm going to agree with you. An understanding doesn't mean that we're going to be on, we're going to be best friends. If I understand what you're saying, I hear you. I don't agree to respectfully agree to disagree, come to a compromise and move on. And if, and please know this, if a certain person's femininity bothers you, you don't have to be around them. No. And it's okay too, because your life will be better and so will theirs. You are not required to like everybody, and you are not mm -hmm. required to have everybody like you. And that's it. <laughs> and and on that note, I will say, wait. Okay, that was better. I hit it wrong the angle. Cheers to that. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Okay, Siobhan. I'm going to let you go first. Yes, because my glass is actually empty. So, I tried. Okay, I'm going to read this. So, for Stella Rosa Black, it says, Grapes for our delicious Stella Rosa Black are harvested from beautiful vineyards. This refreshing wine reveals deep, dark color and is combined with natural flavors of ripe blackberry, blueberry, and raspberry. Stella Rosa Black is seductive, rich, and full-bodied with a hint of sweetness. Served chilled with fresh fruit, cheese, spicy cuisine, and desserts. Celebrate life with friends and a bottle of Stella Rosa Black. I'm going to tell y'all, I grabbed this because of the blackberry, blueberry, and raspberry because I almost grabbed their black cherry. And I was just like, I don't just want a straight up cherry. I'm going to do this, this red blend. Um, and cause I don't really do red a lot, but I don't mind sweet red. And I actually really like this. Oh, um, it is indeed full bodied. 
that I, that I, that's all I got, guys. I can only tell you to dry, sweet, or full body. I, there's a whole TikTok out there that sheds. I'm not going to start telling you flavors because I'd be so wrong. I'd be so wrong. Um, I definitely taste the raspberry, I will say, because it's a little tart. I actually don't even remember what a blueberry tastes but like, nor a blackberry, but I think the blackberry tastes like a heavy cherry. So, yes, I taste those two. Um, I actually really like this. I liked it better than the Moscato, actually. Okay. But I can't give it higher than a four. Like, this gets a four. Now, given my reaction to the Moscato, I was tempted to drop it down, but I'm going to keep that as a four because I actually do like the taste. It's just got a caveat next to it. With, it's got a warning. But warning headache will come. <laughs> I'm gonna give this a four and we'll see next week if I'm telling y'all look it jacked my head up because I I will say this though I don't trust y'all five because y'all call this a semi-sweet it's not y'all have a one to ten scale dry to sweet truthfully this is to me a seven so now I'm really glad I didn't grab any of the sixes because y'all are two points off like what what is this a five in men's, like, come on now. And really a seven in women's, because this is a seven. Okay. <laughs> it's a seven. <laughs> she turned it in the shoe sizes. In the shoe sizes. I did. That's who I am. <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> you going to read about it? Paraphrase. Okay. This wine has. Flavors of ripe raspberry, wild strawberry, and red plum. This does claim to be a full body wine. Um, and all the rest of the ending for the desserts that you said is what they said. Dessert wine, absolutely. This to me was sweeter. Then the um it was sweeter than the Aspie, really? Yes, to me. Wow. Um I want to make sure I drink water and eat. Uh it's probably the strawberry, because strawberries are sweet. It, I don't even taste strawberry. I literally just taste sugar. Mm. Um, I taste a little bit of the I will say I taste more a piece of raspberry and plum. And plums were my favorite fruit before when I could eat the fruit before I became allergic. Plums, like a red plum was like my absolute favorite. I've so I can plum. I've never had a plum in my life. I know they look like, but I've never had one. Oh, poor pumpkin. You need to have a plum. Eat one for me. Um, <laughs> um I probably will never buy this again. Uh, I I'm gonna give this to two guys. I and Stella Rosa has not been giving me life as far as wines go. Um, I mean, the package is pretty. Uh. I, I really have nothing to say, but this this is sugar in a in a glass. I mean, in a jar or, or in a bottle. It's a jar, sorry. In a bottle, um, packaged really nicely. And this sweet rating, it says semi sweet. It says it's a five. This is a nine. Um, so, well, all right. Stella Rosa, y'all need to come on. This, I'll say this. If you have like some vanilla ice cream and a brownie, there you go. So just get full on diabetes is what you're saying. You're going to go for it. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to mess up your insulin levels. Go all the way. Don't half step it. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> Shoot for the stars. <laughs> and then pass out and see them. Because you're going to be seeing stars when you hit the... 
when you hit the floor. You know, call your dentist. Let them know you messed up your feelings. <laughs> Have caveats. Brush your teeth before you go. And just prepare for the, uh, the surgery. Oh, my goodness. I mean, at, least, at least you can say you went with a smile. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all this sugar you gonna be smelling <laughs> um yeah so the rating that i it's gonna be a two you said it too yeah 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 it's just too sweet for me and i feel like had this been like one of the first ones we did on the show i probably would have been like oh okay but being so i've had better wines Including sweet ones, right. And, okay. Yes, including sweet ones. Like, I've had better rosés. Mm. Uh, and I'm not a rosé drinker. Like, I would probably drink a rosé before I drink that. Wow. Yeah. It's too sweet. It's too sweet. Um, and that's all I have. And ladies and gentlemen, this has been another, and fellow wineers, this has been another wonderful installment. Okay, I'm playing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. She's going to have a sugar rush. The sugar rush through the out. And thank you, everybody. For coming. And we're really like, hey, hey. and we'll hold you. And a little two. It's number two. Why? It's like, oh, put the bottle down. Grab the glass. <laughs> Take her to the track. Let her run around a couple times. <laughs> Get her a Gatorade and some water. She gonna need it. <laughs> what are you doing? Okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, but for real, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to thank you for joining this n n another wonderful installment of a little something to whine about with your host, Taya Michelle and Siobhan Camille. Be sure that you like, subscribe, share. While you're here on YouTube, just hit the button. Hit the button. Hit the button. Push the button. <laughs> and leave a comment below. Let us know. Have you had Stella Rose? Rosa? Let us know what have your experiences been with the brand. Good, bad, so-so. Also, if you're a true feminist and you believe in everything that a feminist is, we want to hear from you. Comment. Again, like I said last week, we good for debatables. We can talk. Healthy conversation. Come on, sis, let's whine. Let's whine a little bit, sis. We gotta have these conversations. So just comment below. Let us know. And as always, there's nothing wrong with a little wine. <laughs>